Okay guys, welcome to lesson four where we're going to look at real-time ingests into our data lake. So to do this, we're going to use Kinesis Firehose and we're going to use the demo data feature. First of all, looking at our S3 structure, we're going to use that bronze bucket again. We're going to use the ingest folder stroke database we've created and we'll do a new table. So S3, let's just go back into our main bucket there and into that bronze layer in the ingest and uh, let's create a folder i'm going to call this folder uh real hyphen time ingest real hyphen time ingest perfect next thing we're going to do is go to kinesis kinesis and we will go to fire stream fire hose oh, i have a stream up already we'll call this test data lake real hyphen time we're going to use a direct put method we're going to go next we're just going to leave this all as default there's nothing really to worry about here destination is that s3 bucket choose an s3 bucket this is always fun so we're going to go into our lake demo bucket and then we need to give it a prefix so what we want to do is just jump back on the s3 and what we'd like to do is go into this ingest area and you can see we have the batch person so i'm going to create a folder called real-time ingest and i'm going to create that folder and i'm going to click into it so we want the data to end up here and to do that we need to copy this into the box and then pull it up all under the one line ingest that so what's going to happen here is the data is going to be written to the bronze folder, then the ingest folder, then this real-time ingest folder, and then it's going to add this prefix on. So let's leave it as it is. Let's go next. Let's leave all this as default. Let's create, let's copy this rule for later in case we need it. Uh, Control C. Let's go next. And let's create that delivery stream. Okay, that's the stream created. Let's jump back into the Lake Formation Console quickly. Let's go grant. Let's paste in that rule that we just copied and pasted. Let's give it super permissions and let's grant those. Oh, on ingest and let's give it all tables. We haven't actually created the table yet, but that'll do. Back on the fire hose now. Let's highlight this and let's test with demo, demo data. Start sending data. Okay guys, that's the demo data sending. It will take up to five minutes for it to appear in the bucket because we left it as default on the settings. So what I'm going to do is pause the video here and then we can pick it up once we're ready to go. I should note that this will only cost a few cents, but we want to get enough data into the bucket to make it worth our while. So again, pause the video here and we'll pick it up when we're ready to go. Okay guys, that's been six minutes. I can't stress enough just leave it for five minutes let the data build up let the stream flush itself it's only going to cost a few cents and it's going to give us a really good insight um for the next lessons so let's stop sending that de demo data let's go to the s3 bucket if you just refresh if you haven't already you'll see that a folder is now appearing inside that ingest inside real-time ingest click on it that's the year the month the day the hour and then we have some data and you can see like it's 85.4 kilobits. I think that's less than one cent of data. Um, perfect. So the next thing we need to do is get a table over this data. That would be nice. So back onto the, uh, onto the console of link formation, back in the crawlers, and we're going to create a new crawler. So let's add a crawler. Let's call it ingest real time. Let's go next. Um, data stores, all files. S3, path of my account, my bucket, my bronze layer, my ingest, my real time ingest. Let's select. Let's go next. Add another data store. No. New service rule. Yep. Real time ingest. Uh, I might just go caps here. Real time ingest let's copy that because we need to give it some leak formation permissions next oh 
I'm already exist. Uh, real time ingest demo. Inside into my naming conventions there. Next, on demand. Next, database. So you know we're going to ingest. And next, finish. Back on to lake formation. Make sure in that data permissions section, grant. Principles they add. That role, copied and pasted it in. Let's give it the super permissions and keep it simple. And that's create. Oh, ingest database, sorry. All tables and grant. And it's granted for all tables. Fantastic. Back into the console. Back onto the crawler. Run the crawler. Again, I'll pause the video here. Um, same as last time we ran the craw crawler back in lesson two. It's going to take about a minute and a half. I'll pick it back up once it's done. Okay, guys, again, that took about a minute, and you can see that that one table's been added. So let's just refresh quickly. Yeah. If we just go into databases again, ingest, table ingest, real time ingest, and we go down. You can see interestingly that we've partitioned the data. What are partitions? Partitions are the folder structures that were added below our table folder. What? Okay, so our table starts here, and the partitions then are the year, the month, the day, and the hour. And this makes it easier to search big data. That's why it's done in such a way, which means if you were to write a query and say, hey, give me everything from 2021, it knows to go to the 2021 folder and then take everything below it. However, the names that come up automatically aren't particularly useful. So what we're going to do is edit the schema. And what we know is partition one is actually year. We know partition two is actually month. We know that this is day. And we know that this is R. So let's now save that partitions. That's it set up beautifully for us. The next thing we want to do is maybe just check we can see that data. So let's go to Athena again. Still all within that uh, admin user, don't forget. This time you can see our real data is there. And if I just click down quickly, you can see that the partitions are there. So let's go. And again, we can write a full select because there's not that huge amount of data. Um, best practice would be not to use star and not to use uh, write a query without limits. But again, we're not following best practice here. We're trying to learn. Let's just run that query. And you can see out of all the data that we sent, there's two rows. <laughs> That's it. It's all that uh, results that sent us. So that's why it's kind of key. Let it run for five minutes before you do anything. You can see that we get two rows out. So let's just prove a theory. So if we were to search by year, it would go down into the folder. 2021. And then it would go down to the next folder month. So and month equals 02. And actually that must be uh recognized as a string yep they both are so just to reiterate what this is doing now is a query it's saying hey i know this table's here go to the 2021 folder go to the o2 which is february and then give me everything below which are these two rows again let's just double check that in athena sorry click the wrong button run query and we should in theory get the data back there we go inside into the world of big data that's everything for today, we'll leave it here. Next lesson what we're going to do is we're going to take this data and we're going to write a glue job to show you the other side of lake formation, move it into a new database and then query that database using our user that has access. So that's everything for today. I've been Johnny Chivers. I'll make all these resources for free on my website as always, www.johnnychivers.co.uk. And until next time guys, thanks for watching.